Let's start back during the Cold War, when military technology was advancing at a staggering rate and the world seemed to be teetering on the brink of disaster. And in this context, the US and the Soviet Union were competing not only in the space race, but also in the race for naval supremacy. The USS Plainview was born, a ship that promised to revolutionize naval warfare. It was a high-tech experiment, equipped with hydrofoils. The Plainview had the unique ability to fly above the water, reducing drag and allowing it to reach speeds previously only dreamt of. But as with many groundbreaking innovations, the journey of the USS Plainview was fraught with challenges that eventually led to its obscurity. So was the USS Plainview a failure or was it a crucial piece in the evolution of naval warfare? Join us to find out as today we uncover the true story of the ship that could fly. The story of the USS Plainview cannot be fully grasped without understanding the context of the era in which it was created. So let's go ahead and start back at the beginning. During the Cold War, both nations competed for nuclear armament, technological advancements, and military dominance. The competition also extended to the seas, where Soviet submarines posed a significant threat due to their ability to reach up to 40 knots, making them difficult to detect or pursue. The US Navy sought solutions to enhance its anti-submarine warfare capabilities. In this context of urgency and necessity, the USS Plainview was born. The idea was simple, yet ambitious, to build a ship that could fly above the water, reducing drag and allowing for unprecedented speed and maneuverability. This ship was not just an ordinary vessel in the US Naval Fleet. It was a fusion of naval and aerospace engineering. The fundamental principle behind the USS Plainview was using hydrofoils, a technology that allowed the ship to fly above the water. The concept is similar to that of an airplane, but applied underwater. The hydrofoils act like airplane wings, generating lift when the ship reaches a certain speed. This elevates the ship's hull above the water, reducing drag and allowing incredible speeds as well as stability. In 1960, the Navy began soliciting proposals for constructing a new hydrofoil capable of reaching speeds of 40 knots, or potentially reaching up to 90 knots. The path to realizing this project was complicated, as the companies competing for the contract faced significant technological and financial challenges. Even so, eventually, the Navy contracted Lockheed Shipbuilding and Construction Company in collaboration with General Electric, the Puget Sound Bridge and Dry Dock Company, and together they began to construct the most interesting ship in the world, with the first pieces being laid down in 1964. Hydrofoil technology was not new. Several nations had already explored it. However, the Plainview would be the largest and most advanced hydrofoil for its time. The Plainview was large, lightweight, and highly technological. Equipped with two 600 horsepower diesel engines and two LM1500 jet engines, it could reach remarkable speeds for its size. These engines provided the power needed to lift the ship onto its hydrofoils, but the hydrofoils themselves also pushed the boundaries of what had previously been known in this technology. These components were controlled similarly to an airplane's flaps and tail surfaces. But it gets better, the plane view was also equipped with aviation type autopilot and advanced sensors that monitored height above the sea's surface for maintaining the ship's stability at high speeds. The interior of the ship also reflected its experimental and advanced nature. Accommodating a crew of 20, including four officers, the ship was designated for extended test and development missions. Without a doubt, the design and technology of the USS Plainview made it a unique ship, opening up new possibilities for naval engineering. After its completion in March of 1969, the Plainview was assigned to the Navy's Ship Research and Development Center in Washington, D.C. There, the ship became the focal point of an extensive program of testing and experimentation. These tests covered speed, maneuverability, and stability in rough waters, aiming to validate its use in operational and tactical roles. Additionally, the Plainview served as a testing platform for experimental equipment and armaments. The ship excelled in reconnaissance missions and anti-submarine tactics. The USS Plainview offered a bold vision for the future of naval warfare, but its high maintenance cost, technical complexity, and structural vulnerability 
became insurmountable obstacles. During its testing period, the Plainview accumulated 268 hours of hydrofoil navigation, but was never used for its full potential due to technological as well as operational limitations. So, in 1978, after nearly a decade of testing and experimental operations, the U.S. Navy decided to retire the ship altogether. Once decommissioned, it was sold to a company in California. After removing its engines and hydrofoils for preservation by the Navy, the company attempted to tow the ship south, but was unsuccessful. Rather, ultimately, the Plainview was just abandoned in Hungry Harbor on the Columbia River. The ship remained there, partially submerged and exposed to the elements. What was once a marvel of engineering is now in decay, and it set on fast with deterioration happening rapidly, not to mention many of its parts were dismantled or looted. So today the ship just lays on the riverbank, significantly submerged due to high tide, whereas during low tide, the river water drains out, allowing people to have a peek at what's inside. Much of its superstructure has been dismantled, but its mast still stands. The hydraulic arm that once controlled the hydrofoils are still visible as well. Though the hydrofoils themselves are gone, the rear components that once housed the engine room sits higher on the riverbank and are almost dry during low tide. Meaning that, at least to a degree, this part of the ship is best preserved. Although the USS Plainview faced numerous challenges during its development and operation, its impact and legacy continue to influence the design and construction of successful future hydrofoils. For example, the USS Plainview directly influenced the Pegasus class, a series of hydrofoils used by the US Navy from 1977 to 1993. Moreover, Boeing's jet foils, which are commercial passenger hydrofoils, also benefited from the technological advancements of the USS Plainview, proving that what was learned from the Plainview could be adapted and refined for civilian applications. Before wrapping up here today, I want to rewind the clock back even further, before the Plainview, when the US Navy was already exploring the idea of hydrofoil technology with the USS High Point. This ship, launched in 1962, was the Navy's first hydrofoil patrol craft, developed in collaboration with Boeing, alongside other parties. Its mission was similar to the Plainview, to protect the coast of the United States against enemy submarines. Throughout its service, it underwent multiple modifications to improve its performance. However, like the Plainview, issues with the propulsion system and technological complexity proved to be significant obstacles, eventually contributing to its retirement and abandonment as well. After its decommissioning in 1984, the High Point was sold to private owners, but like the Plainview, it ended up abandoned and is just rotting away in a port to this very day. Their stories are closely linked by the technology they shared, as well as the similar fate that they both encountered. And with that, I thank you all very much for watching. Until next time, I'm Ryan Sokash, signing off.